Hallelujah. Praise be to his holy name. I'm going to leave you a link to um, Mediafar.com where I put a putting the Jesus on the main line uh, in the clouds. So if you have an MP3 or um, or you just want to download load it. I invite you to come there and if you ain't got time just zip it to download and I mean to a mp3 player and <laughs> listen to it on your way to work um, but we had a blessed night last night and they are loaded by date so last night's show was will be um, February the 20th and just click on we had an awesome guest speaker and um, I think we just had an awesome show so and if you want to you can always come to human being broadcasting dot net Jesus on the main line we're on tonight don't forget us please come um, but I come to you to speak about something that the Father has really laid on my heart to speak on. The cloud that covered and guarded Israel through the wilderness we have that same cloud covering us through Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. So I'm going, I just felt led to the training that Israel, because of their disobedience, when they got up there to um, the Jordan River and could have crossed over in the Promised Land and they didn't. Um, they spent 40 years wandering in the wilderness in training. They really were. So let's, let me read this on the ninth chapter of Numbers beginning with the 15th verse. And on the day that the tabernacle was reared up, the cloud covered the tabernacle, namely the tent of the testimony. And at evening when and and at even there was upon the tabernacle as it were appointed of fire until the morning. So it was always the cloud covered it by day and the appearance of far by night. And when the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle, then after the children of Israel's journey and in the place where the cloud abode, there the children of Israel pitched their tents. So when the cloud was taken up, from the tabernacle, it was time for the children of Israel to journey, to move on. And when the cloud come down upon the tabernacle, it was time for the children of Israel to pitch their tents. At the commandment, at the commandment of the Lord or of God Yahweh the children of Israel journeyed and at the commandment they pitched as long as the cloud abode above the tabernacle they rested in their tents and when the cloud tarried long upon the tabernacle many days then the children of Israel kept the cha change 
charge of the Lord God and journeyed not. And so it was when the cloud was a day, few days upon the tabernacle, according to the commandments of God, they abided in their temple tents, and according to the commandments of the of God, they journeyed. And so it was when the cloud abode from evening unto morning, and that the cloud was taken up in the morning, then they journeyed, whether it was by day. Or by night, that cloud was taken up, they journeyed. Or whether it was two days, or a month, or a year, that the cloud tarried upon the tabernacle, remaining there on, the children of Israel abode in their tents, and journeyed not. But when it was taken up, they journeyed. And the commandment of the Lord that, that rested on the tents, and at the commandment of the Lord, they journeyed. They kept the charge of the Lord at the commandment of the Lord by the hand of Moses. Now we see in, in this chapter, these verses, that they did not do anything without the commandment of Yahweh. When he said move, they moved. When he said stop, they stopped. And in between, they still followed the ordinances and commandments of God where they would keep the feast. Every Sabbath day, they kept it holy. They did exactly what God said to do. But let's go over to 1 Corinthians and come up to date because throughout this journey, there was many that fell, that didn't even make it. So I'm going to read to you out of 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, beginning with the first verse. It says, Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. All of them was under the cloud and passed through the sea. And they were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. Let, let's let that in. I mean... They all come through that baptism in the cloud, in the water, as we are come through that baptism, that going down into the water, dying the old man and coming up a new creature, and eating the spiritual meat of Yeshua. We're all, we all are going through this right now. We are covered by His blood. And did all drink the same spiritual drink? For they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Yeshua was that rock that followed them and gave them spiritual drink just as he is today following us and giving us spiritual drink but with many of them God was not well pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness now we're we're having to go back and look at the chapter where um, it says Many are called, but few are chosen. This is the sorting out time. I truly believe this is the sorting out time for the bride to be taken. Because when the bride goes, the adversary will come in.
but they are those that are called but because of their lifestyle and where their hearts are they won't be chosen for this okay now these things out were out let's see let's go back but many of the God was not well pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness now those things were our example our example what can happen to us to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted they fell in the desert because they lusted after evil things and do you think that we can lust after evil things and get by with it no we can't neither be ye idolaters were as were some of them as it is written the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play uh, does that sound like some of our culture today in the church idolaters Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day. Three and twenty thousand. In other words, twenty-three thousand fell in one day. Do you think he's going to take you if your heart isn't right? If it isn't pure? Oh yeah, we're flesh. But we're walking and journeying into that purification to inherit the inheritance that was given to us through Yeshua HaMashiach. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of the serpents. What can I say? That's when Moses had to make the staff and put the serpent and everyone that looked upon it was healed. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Look back on what caused Israel to fall in the wilderness. Look back and see the sins they committed that caused them to be left in the wilderness. We must know what day we are in. It is time. It is time to stop all of this stuff. Clean the heart. Get it right with him. Turn it over and say, Father, here am I. Do as you will. I, I can't. I'm a human being. There's things that come upon me sometimes. And I have to fall upon you to rescue me. Let's go on. Now, all these things happen unto them for an examples. And they are written for our admonishment upon whom the ends of the world are come these were examples of things that you cannot do and should never do these are examples and they were written down for us in these last days to learn what we should not do and how we should walk we're under his command not our command but we're under his command wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall now if you think you're in your mind you're all right and you're fine and you're great and i'm i'm saved i'm born again i'm baptized with the blood of yeshua but you need to take heed to your heart. You need to look inside here and say, 
If there's anything, anything that should not be there, remove it. I do it daily because, see, I don't want to be left behind. And I don't want to fall. I, I do not want to fall. There hath no temptation. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as common to men, and temptations in the flesh are just common to us. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the tempter also make an escape, and that ye may be able to bear it. So when you become under these temptations and they, they're growing strong and you just, you feel like I can't resist a another minute, then you need to look for the escape hatch that God has set up for you because he's always made a way of escape. If that's nothing but turn around and run the other way, praying as you go. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak as to wise men. Judge ye what I say. He has told us that we cannot become like Israel in the wilderness. And like Israel throughout generations. The first temple was destroyed because of idolatry and disobedience. The second one was destroyed for the very same reason, for adultery and disobedience and not accepting Yeshua as the Messiah. Let me tell you that all things are coming to a head and Israel will be judged one more time. But there will be a raiment that comes out of her that will be holy and pure and set aside for God, Yahweh, for he will always have his people here, for he made a covenant himself with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He made a covenant with the people of Israel on Mount Sinai that there would always be that little raiment that comes out. So, we know that Yeshua come down upon this earth as a human being. He walked as a human being. He talked as a human being with all the authority of the Father. And he gave his life as a human being, a sacrifice as that lamb that we should have everlasting life. And now we are walking through the wilderness of this world. We are about to cross over. So when you read chapter 10 of 1 Corinthians, not everybody made it. Not everybody made it. Today, we're about to enter over into that inheritance that he has promised and gave it to Yeshua to give to us at this time, his bride, a promise, a covenant that he made with us when he sat at the Last Supper and he drank the wine when he took the wine and put it in a cup and said, Drink, this is my blood. And he broke the bread and he said, Here, this is my body. And he said he would not do that again until <clears throat> he does it once again in the kingdom of his Father God, with whom his bride. For the bride, the journey is about to end and about to go over to that inheritance that 
we've been promised. But they are those that have refused to obey Him in all things. Um, it's time to get the heart right and get all the other stuff out of our lives, the flesh, the, the lust, because for some the wilderness does not end at Jordan. It will end when they see Yeshua coming once again in the clouds of glory riding that beautiful white I think of a beautiful white stallion bringing the armies down to earth to fight against a war that will be happening in the Middle East that will become so devastating and like I said before a death zone a death zone will happen but as this goes on Jordan will not be affected it will be that whole area over there which was three different countries, but it's all Jordan now, will be a safe haven for that 144,000 of Jews and also Let's go back to Revelations real quick. I know I'll have some people disagreeing, but that's okay. This is what he showed me, so um, it's fine. You know, if you want to disagree, I don't get upset. Because I disagree also with people. But. When that 144,000 is sealed, there is also a multitude that will come out with the 144,000 of all nations, tongues, and languages. So, I just, I'm sorry, I just, I grieve, I grieve for so many people. That they need to come in. And know that he's coming soon. And that we must, we must get our hearts right with him. We must be overcomers. We must stand. For him in these last days. As times are getting more troubled over there in the Middle East, as this year processes on down through whatever history we'll write of it, we need to remember who died for us on that cross. We need to remember who our covering is. The same covering that was sent down over Israel by day and by night, that same type of covering is covering us right now through the blood of Yeshua.
time is short and I believe there won't be many more days for the bride to be here. Um, can I say it this year, next year? I, you know, I don't know. I don't get into those dates and I don't say it. I just know that it's soon. And that many things are coming up on the earth. I do know that for this year. So I call out for people to pray as you've never prayed before. Pray for your country. Pray for your leaders. Pray for the people that cause themselves spiritual. We need to pray like we've never prayed before. We need to lay it on the altar and grab the horns of the altar and pray and pray for our loved ones, our neighbors, our friends, our enemies. We need to pray for He is coming. And terrible things are coming just before He comes. There's, there's some bad things are coming. So people pray like you've never prayed before. Ask forgiveness and keep that door open in your heart and let Him clean it all out. Everything, the past, the present, and what could have happened in the future. Put it in His hands. Put it on Him and say, Father, clean me up. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, send out that cleansing power, cleansing power right now. Throughout this video, let that cleansing power come upon thy people. Cleanse their hearts, cleanse their minds, and let them walk in the light of Yeshua. And let that light shine around the world. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Amen.